Oh, hello. Today on Jake's Wild West Story Corner, we look at not so much a gun, but a round. The round is 300 blackout and it can be considered a bit of a misfit round, may or may not be for you, but I do believe it's got an interesting story to tell. Gather round, kids, while I tell you the tale of two brothers. The first brother, his name was 556. He was the overachiever who could do it all. He was lightweight. He was fast, nimble, deadly. He was the prom king and he went on to dominate the world of military contracts. His brother, his name was 300 Blackout. While 556 hit the gym and went to karate practice, 300 Blackout stayed at home and ate. Very much the opposite of his brother. He could not run very far and he continued to get bigger and slower. In fact, the only thing he did fast was waddle to the fridge to fill his stupid pie hole. While 556 was beloved all over the world, there's one thing he couldn't do. He couldn't be quiet. He was loud everywhere he went, not able to sneak up on anyone. To slow him down would be to render him ineffective. While untalented in most areas, 300 Blackout eventually discovered the one thing he was good at. Because of his slow speeds, he was quiet. While he couldn't run very far, the distances he could, he ran more quietly than anyone. He punched holes, big holes, and people loved him for it so much that they were willing to pay ungodly amounts of money for him. And he screamed from the mountaintops, my name is 300 Blackout. Welcome back guys. I'm your host Chris. The other host is nowhere to be found. But today we're talking about 300 Blackout. Before we get into that, uh, channel sponsor, Peace of Mind. They carry a lot of the stuff that we like to review on the channel. Uh, code for you, February 1911, all one word, lowercase on the February part, no spaces. We'll save you 5% off the whole site. So Peace of Mind, check them out. We really appreciate their support. I don't know where, it's... you back? You made it. Let's do the damn thing. You all right? Let's do the damn thing, dog. When you're all that right. fast, cover a I lot mean, of ground I'm already, quickly. You know, into the intro. So if you just want to. Boys and girls, welcome back to the show. <laughs> it's thrilling to have you all here. You already talked about peace of mind, so thanks for that. Um, so I guess we're talking about 300 blackout today. Yep. So I had a conversation with uh, actually a mutual buddy that, that we know who actually has a, a lot of great real world experience. And I was talking to him about kind of their use of 300 blackout in the organization that he was in. And he's like, to tell you the truth, no, we didn't really use it, but I'm intrigued by it, but I've never had anyone really break it down. Yeah. Like, so yeah. give me the breakdown. What's the relevance? Why should I care? Basically, does anyone care? For why? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, does anyone really care though? Cause I, I've had that one, I didn't want another proprietary round. Right? Uh -huh, now sure. I say I get, and we'll get into this. Also, I just didn't have anyone break it down for me either. It's never been something I've been interested in until lately. Well, and this is going to be probably kind of a lengthy video, so I'm going to warn yep. you in advance. The things that we're going to cover is what is 300 blackout? Why should you care? It's real world application, aka we sort of took a poll, if you will, yeah. of some real world um, 
uh, operators, I guess. Just end users you know? that actually did the damn thing. Yeah, but you know, people in the field that would be the kind of people using this go, hey, did you guys use 300 Blackout? Yeah. Um, and then we are going to cover this gun uh, a, a little bit towards the end of the video, so you can stick around for that if you like. Um, but let's start getting into this here, okay? So I think it's important we start with a bit of history before we just start jumping into foot pounds of energy. That's right, kids, we're going to talk about foot pounds of energy. Right? You like deep dove into this. Yeah, huh? I know shit. Oh, okay. Well, I have a smart friend and I, oh, okay. he Austin, knows shit. yeah, Austin helped me. Austin from, uh, <laughs> from TFP. Austin Rex? Yeah. 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 So thanks, Austin, for the help on this. Um, so here's the deal, guys. Um, let's go through a little bit of history. So subguns, primarily MP5s, was like the thing, yeah. right? That was used really through the 60s all the way up into the 90s. Right, and then we kind of wound up in this transitional period. A lot of it started happening after um, Somalia and, uh -huh. and Mogadishu, right? And you had a transition where organizations, primarily uh, special operations, primarily CAG, was looking for something that was gonna have a bit more punch than an MP5, right? Yeah. So, hey, we do want something that's gonna hit a little bit harder, but, but still, still gonna quiet. be very compact and, and quiet. quiet. Yeah. And so from that became the, the evolution of, ultimately kind of what became the Mark 18, right? As we yeah. went to short barreled ARs, sure. not 300 blackout yet, but short barrel ARs, right? Car 15s sure. and the Mark 18 and all, all that kind of stuff. And you, you gained and lost some stuff, right? For those of you that are new here, I, I, a lot of notes when we do these videos. So you just got to bear with me, right? So here's what you gained. Consistency of manual of arms, okay? Yeah. So if I have my primary 16 inch fighting rifle and then sure. I got me an MP5, cool, but they're separate manuals of arms, sure. right? So you do have to train a lot, right? So you gain consistency in manual of arms. You gained a more potent round, right? That could now penetrate body armor, right? 5.56 five, versus nine mil, yeah. right? Nine mil not, not gonna do hot against body armor, right? Yeah. And then you also increase the distance. So you go, hey, that uh, nine mil subgun, you know, 100 yard and in firearm, sure. right? And now you're, let's just say Mark 18, for example, you know, at least 300, yeah. right? Probably further than People that. People argue that, but they don't know what they're talking about. Right, so. but you know, so you can punch more distance. Here's what you lost. You lost the ability to run subsonic rounds and keep the noise down. For those of you that don't know, 5.56 does not, uh, work. Suppress Subs very well. Well, no, no, no. Subsonic, not suppress. Oh, yeah, no. It, yeah. it defeats the entire purpose. Yeah, right? Because yeah. it is a round that relies on velocity in order to do its job. So, um, and with ARs and 5.56, the shortest you could really go was 10.5 until mm -hmm. you started getting into massive issues and, yeah. and stuff like that, right? So the AR became this jack of all trades, master of none sort of thing. It could do everything fairly well, but it wasn't great at anything versus sure. a subgun that was very good at a particular thing called sure. CQB, right? Sure. Um, so we're left with this void of having a niche weapon that can do that close quarter battle style thing and keep the noise and the concussion down and all that kind of yeah. stuff, right? So enter 300 Blackout. The premise of 300 Blackout, <clears throat> for those of you that don't know, is take your existing AR, swap your barrel, and you got a 300 blackout gun, mm. right? So your 300 blackout gun, um, it can be the same lower, same upper, uh, same mags, right? Same grip, sa same everything, right? Maybe different suppressor depending on if you had a 5.56 dedicated yeah, camp, a five, five, but that's a different, yeah. you know, different animal for a different day. Yeah. Um, so all you had to do was swap your barrel and now your 5.56 gun became a 300, 300 blackout gun, okay. right? For most people, they're probably not doing barrel swaps all the time, so it's more than likely, hey, I just got a second upper that's in 300 blackout, sure. right? Um, obviously, hey, especially if we're talking about short barrels, hey, you know, make sure you're following all the protocol, which are now uh, super interesting uh, in regards to, you know, pistols and short barrel rifles and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, for reference, this is January 14th, so... Yeah, January 13th was a rough yeah, day yesterday for the, the community. Yep. But here's the perk. So you swap over to 300 Blackout. Now I got two different ways that I can run my gun. I can run it supersonic or subsonic, right? Mm -hmm. Trade offs on both of those, right? Sure. And this is what Austin, Austin Rex, uh, he's been on the channel a bunch, but he has a great line. He calls it from uh, silence to violence, sure. right? With the swap of a Mac, sure. right? Now, um, so basically unsubs, here's what you get. Hang on this bad boy for one sec. Uh, it's cold too. I was hoping um, you'd just go the whole video holding. Yeah, it. I was like, I'll go five minutes and then and then you're up. So here's the deal on subs. So we're gonna actually kind of break down a little bit of data here for you. It's an extremely quiet, and that's fine too. Um, it's an extremely quiet suppressed round, and that is the main perk of the subsonic round because it doesn't crack the sound barrier, right? It suppresses very, very well, unlike 556. So you are now shooting a 30 uh, cal round, right? Um, instead of a nine mil round. So it is gonna pack more of a punch. Yeah. How much more? Cause that was one of the things I wanted to know doing this video is, okay, so real talk, how much more energy is this putting out 
yeah. versus a, a nine mil, sure. right? It's a, a sub gun. So here we go. What grain weight? <laughs> oh, I'm so oh, glad, you, okay, so okay. glad you asked. Cool. Uh, so take my uh, SP5, right? So that's an 8.86 inch barrel, right? So just call it just shy of a nine inch barrel, right? Shooting 147 grain, nine mil, okay? okay? Good defensive round. 317 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle, okay. right? So that will drop off at distance, of course, but, right? But at the muzzle, easiest way to measure it. So seven and a half inch, 300 blackout gun, shooting 220 grain subsonics, right? They're cooking at 930 feet per second at okay. the muzzle. The uh, They're putting out 422 foot pounds of energy. So that equates to 25% more energy on 300 blackout than nine mil, Okay. right? So for those of you that just wanted the like, so break it down. Like, it, does it do better in terms of terminal ballistics? Yes, it does. You get 25% about twenty-five percent better. Yeah, you get about twenty-five percent more energy. Now, granted, this is going to depend on barrel lengths and grain weights and all kinds of different stuff. But you, yeah. we don't have a whole chart that you can break down, right? Here's some simple numbers. It equates to about twenty-five percent more energy that it's putting down range, right? And here's what's cool. So um, I don't have the photo of it, but. I, I took this, right, and my SP5 with a can on it, put them next to, next to each other. My SP5 is about a half inch longer, oh, actually. Okay. There you so go. if you're like, but yeah. is this actually subgun size? Like, yeah, it is. It's actually just a tad bit shorter cool. for me, right? Yeah. Um, so, da -da -da -da, and both of those, right, whether an SP5 or this, in my mind, are really like 100 meter guns. If you're shooting sure. subs, you're really not shooting those subs past sure. 100 meters on this, right? Now, again, you could swap the supers and, and now you got some distance. So supers, you are gonna, like I just said, increase your distance, right? You're also gonna increase your velocity, which would matter if you had armored targets, right? Like if you needed to get through armor, then sure. you know the supers, subs are not gonna do great in that scenario. Um, 125 grain at the muzzle is gonna produce about 970 foot pounds of energy. So you're talking significantly Significant, more. So yeah. if you wanted to go from like the subs that are do pretty good to like, yo, you got some heavy shit and shit, like yeah. supers are gonna do exactly that, gotcha. right? So, and again, that's just this, the swap just of them around. Just mass times velocity, right? right? So, yeah. And uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit of real world application because we wanted to kind of cut through internet folklore sure. of what is 300 by, oh, and I heard this guy, I heard that guy. Okay, yeah. cool. So we went to the guys. The guys. Like yeah. the guys and said, so tell us, like we'll leave your names out of it, but what do we got? Like, yeah. what is this thing being used for? Mm -hmm. So we'll kind of rattle off a few different things that we got. So I'll start, or you got anyone you talk to? Yeah, yeah, uh, special operations guy, right? Yeah. Um, he asked, we don't talk about name or where he was from, so is what it is, we respect that, right? Sure, yeah, of course. Um, he was in like a sniper section, mm -hmm. reconnaissance, reconnaissance section. So they would go up on target if they're gonna take over a building or whatever the case may be, running 300 block out with their like sniper rifle slung. Yeah. And that was for obviously being as quiet as possible, taking out potential sentries, getting to your spot where you're gonna set up the long gun. Yep. That, and he said that's primarily how he used it. Yeah. Um, and so, he got out recently. Okay, so. cool. Um, yeah, so I had basically the same thing confirmed, which is, hey, that is a, uh, we would have our primary slung, right? And we would have this for the, we are going to be as discreet as possible, basically the approach uh -huh. uh, to a target. And then, hey, once it goes loud, cool, ditch that, grab your primary. Okay. Right? So, and, and I heard that a couple times. So I'm like, okay, cool. That's a good data point, right? So, hey, and that and that is from, I guess I'll just say, uh, reputable organizations. Sure. <laughs> you know? Um, so there was that. Another folk from that community, he said 300 blackout in his opinion, hey, it's the only way to get good terminal ballistics out of a subgun sized platform. Okay. That's a good line. Not wrong. And by the way, everyone that I talked to that had use in this in professional capacities was running SIG uh, MCX Rattlers. Okay. It was like across the board. Because folder. Side folding stock. And still shoot. Yeah, so my other buddy, he said they would um, use them in a capacity inside of vehicles okay. when they needed something very compact, right? Which made sense because you could also side fold the stock. Yeah. And uh, inside of like um, confined spaces, buildings, but also in like a uh, like executive protection role oh, okay. if they yeah. needed something that was a primary weapon, sense. but something they could conceal like under a big coat or something like Small, that. Small maneuverable. Yeah, again, yeah, okay. side folding stock, right? Yeah. And the, the Rattler would do very uh, good at that. So for those of you that think we hate SIG, no, we don't. Uh, the Rattlers are really cool. The Rattlers are. Um, talked to a couple Green Berets. He said, nope, nope, never really came Not up. Not really their mission Not really set. came up. Uh, talked to a buddy who was from the uh, Navy community. Uh, he said, great for niche applications. He said, if the ammo wasn't like a buck around, he said, I'd basically use it all day long for anything a hundred and in. Like he said, it'd be my go-to because it's just a pleasant gun to shoot because yep. of the, the sound and of everything. Course. Right, so kind of a recap of some uh, pros and cons to the round here. So pro. 
subgun size package, right? So overall footprint of the damn gun, tiny package. right? Tiny package, right? Not something most most of us would want to brag about, but um, when it comes to 300 blackout, hey, good. Smaller package is better, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, I guess. Um, 30 cal subsonic round producing good terminal ballistics, right? So you do have a heady, heavy hitting round with good terminal ballistics. Extremely quiet. These are all pros, right? Um, and for those of you who are like, is it really quiet? Yes, it is very quiet. You'll notice in the footage from today's shooting, like, no, we don't wear ears when you shoot. Right. The sh wear ears when you shoot 300 blackout suppressed is kind of... It's the closest thing to like a movie quiet that people talk about. Yeah, it, right? it's definitely like take take your damn ears the off. The mechanical it. motion of the gun in the recycle yeah, process. Yeah, it is or louder. The, you know, recycling process. Um, other pros, right. ability to run supers. Uh, also excellent for vehicles, just given, again, the size of the, sure. the platform, right? Not having a 16-inch gun in, in your windshield or whatever. I guess you could collapse your stock, but, you know, whatever. Um, uh, excellent for uh, home defense gun. Great home defense That's gun. That's my argument for it. Home defense gun all day long. Yeah. Right? A coupled mag, right? I got 60 rounds of subs. Not going to blow anyone's ears out. Heavy hitting round. Like, great CQB home defense gun. Say 10 rounds, 2,000 grains just went into some dude. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Nasty. Yeah. Nasty stuff. Um, excellent Nods gun. Um, great Nods gun. Yeah. Great Nods gun. You hear the coyotes? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Sorry, coyotes behind. So if we uh, if we lose anyone in the video, that's what happens. Crispy looks like the weakest out of us. Well, own. he's the easiest to eat. <laughs> um, so anyway, excellent nods gun, consistent manual of arms. Okay, let's talk cons real quick because there's really only a couple uh, in my mind. <clears throat> Number one is really the primary one: cost of ammo. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, right. So if you're uh, like, how much is three hundred bucks? About a about a dollar. Buck around. Dollar around. Yep. Okay, so. It will always be a niche gun because of the cost of ammo. Sure. Right. This is never going to be the thing that you take to a training class for your 500 rounds a day. And if you do, you're rich. <laughs> like, you're loaded. That's all my buddy runs is 300, and he's done like three or four training classes. And I'm like, bro, your ammo costs more than the class, travel, hotel, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Your two-day ammo bill is at least a grand. He is rich, though, so yeah. he doesn't really Well, care. good for him. Man. Yeah. Um, so those. cost of ammo, that's number one, right? Averages out about a buck around or more. Um, Next thing for me, which is really the only other con, would be that, hey, if you're going to be bouncing back and forth between subs and supers, some of the guns can need a little bit of extra sort of fine tuning yeah. to find this balance of being able to do subs and supers. Yeah, run both. Yeah, uh -huh. right? And that can be a, a little tricky, and, and who knows, that might even come up inside well, of this video. Well, honestly, like, if you build a gun that can't run subs, like... Like, what, what, are, we do? what are we doing? The now? whole point of 300 Blackout is run subs on, so... Well, let's talk about a couple other things and then we'll talk about the gun. So, uh, number one, if you guys are looking for ways to support the channel, uh, one, we would love it. Two, uh, you can support us with uh, your real estate business. Uh, yeah. we, we are real estate agents and we have a bunch of different agents we work with all over the country. Um, Did so, I tell you I just listed a house for one of the guys from FLP? Uh, yeah, funny enough, because they're next on the list. Yeah. Uh, one of our sponsors, selling one of our sponsors' yeah. houses. Great. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you can support us. Uh, if you need real estate help, let us know. 1911syndicate.com. The Patreon's also a great way to support us. We do a lot of behind the scenes content, we do private classes. Uh, our first one's coming up probably about a month or two from the time that you guys see this video. Yeah, we don't train. We have trainers that are legitimate come in. No, uh, Mike Panone from CTT Solutions is doing the first one. It'll be a red dot pistol class, two days. Uh, we shoot all day. We hang out. We party. We drink at night. Um, or don't drink at night if you don't want to. That's fine, too. Um, but anyway. My father's coming for that class. Yeah. Well, I'm going to get him hammered. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so Dwayne, it's me and you. <laughs> me and you, my friend. Um, and then last thing, uh, FLP, Firearms Legal Protection. Yeah. Thanks to those dudes. Yeah, they're awesome. If you carry a gun just for CCW, uh, you're going to want insurance, right? Uh, heaven forbid you ever get into an altercation, got to use your firearm. They're going to take care of you, and they have incident cleanup. So, you know, I think that's pretty cool because oh, yeah. it's something you forget. Like, oh, I just, you know, now I got to clean up the mess I made. No, FLP will do it for you. They'll do it. They'll pay that guy. Yep. Uh, there's code 1911. Uh, it saves you a, a significant chunk off that subscription, so you can get, go third. check that out. So with that said, <clears throat> let's start talking about this damn gun here. Do a little mini, mini gun review in the process. Let's get into her. So there is a... I'm going to tell you this, okay? There's a cliched, cliched saying uh, in the world that mm -hmm. says, "Beauty comes from within." Oh, okay. Okay. You should just hang out here. 
You should just hang out. I mean, I know you've got a phone call to do. Just hang out. Just hang out. We'll see. We'll see. So, beauty comes from within, right? Yeah. The, the thing that that would allude to is that you could have a uh, perfect 10 OnlyFans model, right? Okay. But she's really hideous on the inside. Like, she's a bad person. Yeah, like Shallow Howl. You remember that? Yeah. It's the reverse of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you're like, oh, I don't like her because she's not cool inside. Yeah. Now, we all know that's bullshit, right? If she's that level of hotness, we tolerate what's what's inside. Crazy hot matrix scale, right? Right. Yeah. So, this particular gun is a case of, we've got a level 10 hot uh, model here, and she's ugly in the inside, kids, and we got to talk about it. Because we got problems, okay? My friend might come join. I, I, I don't know. So let's um, let's do this. So full disclosure, guys, because I believe it's important that you hear this because there is a common thread that goes around inside of the uh, the gun tube world, right? That uh, hey, if you receive something for free, then you're a shill, and you po possibly you know you, you couldn't possibly give us an honest review on it, right? Because you you have a vested interest with the company. Okay, cool. So let me be very direct about this. I did not pay for this gun, okay? We've done uh, a, one other video for Battle Arms before, and we were gonna do this. We're working on this video for like six months, and hey, just kind of the way things work, guys. A lot of times, like, it's, hey, yeah, we'd love to do the review, but you know, we gotta balance the scale somewhere, so like, hey, we, we're gonna request to keep the firearm. So, to be very clear, this is a free gun. I did not pay for this, because that's just the nature of the beast, oftentimes. And that would make you think that I can't possibly be honest with you about it. And, well, here we go then. So, <clears throat> so the gun took about six months to get to me. No problem, that, that's, that's not, a, not a ding or anything, right? Just going through the manufacturing process. The gun came to me. So <clears throat> I took the gun out the first day, right? Threw all the accessories on, optic light, all that kind of stuff. I took it out to zero. And first trigger pull. Go bang, cool, reset the trigger, and I get a click. And I'm like... Well, that's not a good way to start. And so chamber a new round, bang, click. I'm like, oh, that's not good. And uh, and the gun was clean, like I'd oiled it and everything, like gun, gun was good to go. And so I'm like, okay, mag issue, you know? And so, and so I swapped to a different mag. Um, bang, click, bang. And then I have like a failure to feed or like a double feed or something. I mean, it was just, you know, like a cluster of a malfunction. I'm like, well, this ain't good. So I go through this about 15 to 18 rounds. I know that very specifically because it was less than a box because I shot a little video. I sent the battle arms that day and I just said, hey, look, cost of 300 blackout being what it is because I'm paying for the ammo. Just so you, again, you guys are clear on that, right? At a buck around it out of my wallet, I'm not willing to throw that many rounds. And it was less than a box of ammo before I was like, hey, the gun doesn't work. So I sent them a video and I have a call with them and they call me and they say, what kind of ammo are you running? I'm like, you know, I don't know, SMB subsonic stuff. Um, and they're like, huh. And long story short, they go and they ask the guys that work there and they're like, well, th that gun was, you know, made to run supers. Like we built them to run, we, 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 you know, they said we built them on 147 grain. And I'm like, is 147 grain subsonic on 300 blackout? Answer is no. And so I'm like, hang on, you're telling me you made a seven and a half inch PDW stock 300 blackout gun that only runs supers? Like, am I missing something here? Like I'm feeling crazy right now, right? And they're like, oh, you know, let us, let us look into it. So about two weeks goes by, I don't hear anything from them. At this point, we've got a review, right? That's coming up, like we gotta make this video. And um, ironically, Chris uh, sees them at a, at a gun show in, in Arizona. And is like, hey, you know, you guys working on that 300 blackout gun? You know, we kind of like to get that thing fixed. And um, and the ammo thing came up. Hey, you're running on the wrong ammo. And then the altitude came up. And there was a suggestion that we're, I guess, shooting the gun too high in the world. The altitude is too high for this gun. And at that point, you just kind of throw your hands in the air and you go, okay, I guess that that is how we're doing this. So three weeks go by, no solution is presented to me on how to fix this, no springs, buffers, anything like that are sent. It's just like, okay. So, and for those of you that think I might be crazy, like, well, do they say that it runs on subs? Not directly, but humor me. The model of this is the silent professional. Silent. Well, 300 blackout to be silent 
and a silent professional's gun would have to be run on subsonic ammo. So if it's only made to run on supers, please call it the loud professional. Like, don't call it the silent professional. That would be the, in like, do the inverse of that. So long story short, I have to wind up taking this over to Alex at Trajectory Arms, and that's just a bad look when I've got to take a manufacturer's gun to another manufacturer and gunsmith to say, can you please make this work? Um, and they had it for a couple of days, troubleshooting it. Multiple things were out of spec. Spe <clears throat> specifically, I remember in relation to the, the uh, bolt or the bolt carrier group, um, and simply put, I mean, this gun just would not run. There was no combination of things where they could get it to lock back on last round. There was never last round hold open. And basically we got to the nuclear option of, hey, Jake, the only option is we just got to start opening up the gas port until the thing eventually runs. And I'm like, well, it is what it is. I, I mean, like literally, essentially the entire gun was like, they swapped, I mean, gas ports, I mean, all kinds of stuff, like a bunch of different cans. It needed a really high back pressure. The combination was a really high back pressure can a Surefire specifically was running. The Sam Man S does run, not like flawless, but it does run. Uh, new gas port and open the, the shit, uh, sorry, new gas block and open the shit out of the gas port, right? And now it runs decently. So that is this gun. And I would come here and do a review on it, but to be, you know, because it's kind of a heartbreaking one because you look at it and you go, man, this is actually a really cool gun. Full AMB billet lower. I actually kind of like the PDW stock. Like it's got a lot of good things going for it, but there's no scenario where I can come here as an honest reviewer, regardless of if I know the company or not, and say, this gun doesn't work, but you should buy it. Well, the gun doesn't work and there was no solution for it. So it's like, I can't in any sort of good faith recommend the thing to you. While this is not the fun part of the job and doing a video like this, I truthfully, I like, I kind of hope it maybe serves it, that someone from Battle Arms is watching this and going like, damn, yeah, that is correct. Like, cause there's nothing here that I said that, that's incorrect. So I, I hope that someone hears this and goes, you know what, we got to get our shit together that is correct. Like that should not have gone down that way. So anyway, that's my two cents on it. So that's the gun. That's the round. With that said, let's take you to some closing thoughts. I have to admit, I like 300 Blackout and making this video has actually made me like it even more. It's niche clearly, but it's got its place. It'll likely never be widely used just based on the cost of ammunition. And while a dollar per round is enough to deter most of us, what if I told you there's another subsonic rifle round that makes 300 Blackout look like it's for pores? Well, that round is 8.6 Blackout, and it's coming up next.